And we're back. Hello. Welcome. Take two with Jerry and Debbie. This is the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. We all have gifts and talents. How we use them, well, that's up to us, but God is the giver of gifts, Debbie, to everybody. And we're going to be joined on the program today by a couple of gentlemen who have significant gifts in the area of music and are using them to bring souls to Christ. Music is a very powerful way to move, like you said, Jerry, move souls closer to Christ. Music just speaks to so many of us deep in our souls. And I think these two gentlemen do it so beautifully well, mainly because their hearts are are really in the right place. Um, their spirits are alive. And God is working through them. And so many people, thousands and thousands of people are touched by their music on a daily basis. I know I am. And I almost couldn't even sleep last night, Jerry, because the, their songs and their lyrics were, were flowing around in my head as they always are. They're in my car all the time because I have all their CDs in my car. But I got to tell you, Jerry, song is powerful, especially in this day and age, to really speak to those you know, people that are, that are really struggling in life or even just wanting to uh, pray to God through song. Song is very, very, very powerful. And, and it's important for us to discuss that today. So dear listeners, we want to hear from you. We're talking about building God's kingdom and primarily right now, you know, using song, using words to speak to God in a be- beautiful, fluid way. So we want to hear from you. Let's keep this conversation very vibrant today at 1-800-585-9396. All right, we'll be joined in just a moment by Matt Marr. You may uh, certainly probably are aware of his music. Uh, Two-time Dove Award recipient just a matter of a couple of weeks ago, I think. And we'll have Matt on the program. And then Tom Booth a little bit later in the show. Our number is 1-800-585-9396. We'll do our best to get you uh, to some calls from Matt and Tom. So if you'd like to talk with Matt Marr right now, 800-585-9396. Debbie and I are excited. Excited to mention also that Matt is going to be headlining an event that my company, Third Millennium Media, is producing. It's called the One Faith Experience. It's going to be in St. Louis next April. Six top Catholic speakers for a faith conference during the day. And then in the evening, the Thirsting out of Portland, Oregon, Vancouver, Washington area will open up and Matt Marr will headline the night there. So we'll give you details about that uh, after we chat with Matt, who doesn't have a lot of time to be with us. So I want to bring him on the program right now. Uh, Matt Marr is originally from St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada, currently lives in Nashville. I mentioned that he has uh, won two Dove Awards, Songwriter of the Year and Worship Song of the Year for 2015. So without further delay, Debbie and I are blessed to welcome Matt Marr to Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Hello, Matt. How are you? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Hi, Great to Matt. have you on. So where, where, did we, uh, where, did, where did we track you down, Matt? I know you're a busy guy. Oh, yeah. I'm in Benton, Illinois, which... Uh, it's kind of in the southern part of Illinois. I'm uh, playing at the Benton Civic Center tonight. I'm on uh, a tour, uh, my tour called the Saints and Sinners Tour. And when did you just open this up, the Saints and Sinners Tours, Matt? Um, we actually started in the spring. We did okay. a couple of weekends in the spring and then kind of ramped it up this fall again. And um, it started two weekends ago, and it'll run through probably into about – second weekend of Advent, I believe. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Well, congratulations to you. We want to say congratulations a couple weeks ago. Uh, Two, not one, but two Dove Awards, Matt. How did you, I mean, you must have been just, you know, blown away with excitement. And I'm sure you got a lot of uh, of fans that just uh, congratulated you because you're a very, very good person and you you certainly deserve it. Your work is amazing. Well, you know, if I learned anything... From my time in Arizona, it's actually, you know, Tom Booth, who's, I know he's going to be on the program in, in a little while, is one of my mentors, really, he's an older brother, you know, spiritually. Um, you know, the best thing to do is to write with as many different people as possible. So that that way, <laughs> if, if they win, you can just kind of hop on their coattails. <laughs> so I feel like the Songwriter of the Year Award was kind of what happened in a way, like, I, I was... It was just very fortunate. It was a great, it's been a great season of collaborating with people, you know, that the body of Christ is stronger together than apart. And I think um, God loves and invites collaboration. 
And uh, so that, you know, I would say the songwriter award was honestly, for me, if there was something personally that was, you know, meant a lot, that one would mean a lot because, um, you know, like Debbie, like you were saying, songs are, songs are powerful things. And uh, a song can inspire somebody. A song can affirm somebody's emotions. A song can, you know, kind of point the soul in a certain way. And so that was a, you know, it's a, it was a, you know, it was a great, it was a great thing, you know, but it, you know, the worship song thing, I was honestly surprised. I mean, I looked to my wife, Kristen, who was at the Devil Awards with me and they were showing all these videos of all different nominees. And I saw one and, um, I thought to myself, uh, I think it was Phil Wickham was also nominated. And I remember I even looked at Kristen and I was like, he's probably going to win this one. And then, and then I'm I'm sitting there, and she's, like, looking at me, and I'm like, what? She's like, they just announced your name. You should go up. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was all a bit of a shock, really. But, I mean, I think it's great. It's, you know, my kids don't know anything about it, so they don't care. They just want their dad. And it it's a great honor, but at the end of the day, it, um, you know, it's a, it's a good encouragement. Um, and, uh, but I don't, it doesn't necessarily, I think I, you know, it, I know it doesn't affect my sanctity. That's for sure. So, um, you <laughs> yeah, know, just I make... think the call is, is still to be authentic people who love Jesus and love the church and, and keep going. Matt Marr is with us here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Tom Booth to follow later in the program, 1-800-585-9396. Matt, I know we've only got you for a few more minutes, and we're going to try to get a couple of uh, phone calls in for you, if that's all right with you. Oh, that'd be fun. All right, let's start with uh, Anna Maria in Hardysville, Pennsylvania. Anna Maria, you're on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie and Matt Marr. If you can try to be brief, we'll, we want to get a couple calls in if we can. Hello, Anna Maria. How are you? Hello. Hi. Thank you so much, um, Jerry and Debbie, for taking my call. I, was, I listened to EWTN Radio and uh, for the past month, and when I found out Matt Marr was going to be on your show, I'm telling the world to listen to you right now. <laughs> so uh, very excited. Thank you so much for taking my call. Matt, I've seen you in action live at Abbey Fest, Abbey Faith and Music Fest in Paoli, Pennsylvania, and you are absolutely amazing, and I want to share with you that you have definitely inspired and affirmed so many people in our youth group and um, in, in my own family in itself, so I have a 13 and a, tw- and a 10 year old um, at home, and you are definitely inspiring my husband, who is not Catholic, um, to um, learn more about the faith. And it is through your, your music, I think that's really touching his heart a lot. So thank you so much for your gift of saying yes to the Lord to um, go ahead and um, use your gifts to spread his good message. You are a chameleon for sure. Those are the words of my husband's. Um, thoughts today for you, and um, not many musicians can actually um, sound like that. So you have such a gift. I have a quick question for you. Um, what inspires you so much to keep going every day? Oh well, thank you so much um, for all of that. <laughs> it's very encouraging. You know, I said that I said to Jesus about a year and a half ago, Lord, this is not an ultimatum because I'm. Who am I to? It'd be a, it'd be somewhat of a foolish endeavor to try to issue ultimatums to the Son of God. But I said I really need to know that what I'm doing makes a difference, and not a difference in a in a material, capitalistic, worldly sense, in terms of success and numbers and measuring things by that. But just simply, Lord, if I could hear stories from individual people of how something that I just sort of, you know, hobbled together in terms of words and melodies and trying to articulate my faith, that you were able to take that and multiply it in such a way that it would reach even one person, then I'll, then I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Um, you know, I think moving to Nashville three years ago was a great thing, um, but I'd been in Phoenix for 17 years, so I, I pretty much... You know, when I moved to Arizona, in some ways I built a, another life. You know, I still have friends in Canada where I grew up that I keep in touch with now on Facebook and stuff like that. But you definitely kind of move on. And, and this second chapter of life that I had built, which 
so much it was around my faith, um, it was hard to leave. And uh, so for me, I guess what keeps me going is staying connected to um, to the stories of people uh, um, and hearing the testimony of how this stuff, um, this music, God's able to use it to inspire their walk of faith. Because um, uh, that's, you know, to me, that's the real evidence um, of it. You know, who cares about how many records I sold? Um, I'd rather know, you know, about the story of parents and mothers and widows and orphans and um, drug addicts and, you know, people who, um, who God has reached out to and, and somehow, in a miracle, I got to be part of it through a song. Thank you, Anna Maria, for that call. Uh, Matt, we want to honor the time you've given us. So we were told about 15 minutes. Oh, we do okay. have... I can take a few more minutes. Come on, let's keep going. All right, cool. <laughs> okay. uh, we've got uh, Andrea in Bel Air, Maryland, uh, listening on the EWTN app. Andrea, you're on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie with Matt Marr. How are you? Hi. Thanks for taking my call, Jerry and sure. Debbie. Hey, Matt, um, I just wanted to, I was just listening to the previous caller, and I just wanted to let you know, I, I, I was originally calling to ask you when you were going to come back out to Bel Air, Maryland. We got the chance to see you, I think it was in 2010. Yeah. You were um, up at John Carroll High School, and yep. I brought my husband, and the two of us had been away. Um, we were going through a big struggle in our marriage at the time, and um, your music really inspired me um the song alive again really touched me and the first time i heard it was at a non-denominational church here local one mm. and um that song just it, it touched my heart and it brought me to my knees the words brought me to my knees in a way that both spiritually and physically and um you know i just kept listening to your music um, and we went once I heard that you were going to be in Bel Air. Uh, it was like, wow, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to mm. go see him. And um, I just know that you, what you're doing is a ministry, and it's a beautiful thing. You're bringing God to people who have never. I mean, your music is incredible. Um, love, love the melodies and everything. But people that have never really heard God's word can hear. Um, hear him through you, through your music. It's powerful. Um, wow. So wow. after I started hearing, like, so I got your re- album, and then um, the communion song is what I kept listening to over and over and over again, and I, I came back to the Catholic Church. I came back to, mm. I came back home because mm. of that song, mm. because uh, the Eucharist, and it just, it all, God was working through your music. Just know that. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Um, you know, the the song Alive Again was uh it's obviously it was it's based on um a chapter from Augustine's Confessions, Saint Augustine. So I'd encourage you, um, actually it's a it can be a bit heady at at places, but um there's a lot of it if you're willing to kinda devote kinda devote the time and, and try to digest it in small chunks. There's a lot of St. Augustine's story that I think you would um, you would glean a lot, you'd get a lot out of, you know, in some ways listening to you, you know, when people tell me about that song and they're like, I don't know what it was, but this song just sort of God reached out to me to it. And I always say like, well, that's the ministry, that's the life of St. Augustine still echoing out across eternity, making an impact in people's lives. I mean, that, you know, the fundamental reason that we, that we profess the communion of the saints is this simple truth that when the gospel interacts with an individual person, it creates a, uh, an, an evangelistic moment <clears throat> that, that, that literally rings out through, through all eternity. And uh, all of them in heaven give glory to God, and they're all about Jesus. But on the earth, um, each and every individual story um, has its own merits, its own distinctions, its own its own ministry, if you will. You know, I mean, you look at someone like Blessed Mother Teresa, you know, her life is a ministry now. I mean, there she had a ministry while she was on the earth, and now the legacy of her life 
ministers to people. And so I think, like, even with the live again, like that song, like, I always believe that that, that song is tapping into the legacy that is the life of St. Augustine. And, you know, it echoes now on in heaven, but here on the earth, it still continues to minister to people. And, you know, being a guy who's 19 years old, who walks away from his faith, um, has a child illegitimately, becomes a master public speaker, and is living with somebody, I, you know, I think that life has a lot to say to people today. And I think it has a lot to say to help and minister and share with people the love of God, you know. And so thank you for sharing that. And uh, just know that, you're, that your witness is uh, it's not just about music. Yeah. Andrea, thank you so much. Your story uh, moved us all to emotion and, and welcome home. Welcome home. Beautiful story. We're talking today with Matt Marr about using God's gift to build the kingdom. Matt, we have so much more we wanted to share with our listeners, which we're excited because we actually are announcing it right now. But before we do, I just wanted to say to you, because I think I can speak for all the Arizonans. Um, we know you live with Kristen and, and your beautiful family in Nashville now, but Arizona, you'll always be part of the Arizona family and you know that because you're in all of our minds and hearts and prayers and you're in my car i mean all your cds are in my car i'm sure that (laughs) that's true with everyone else so you're 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 an arizona and uh uh, you know first and foremost to us so um but we want to just thank andrea again for calling she asked if you were going to be back in bel Bel air maryland are you going to be around that area so she can catch you um let me look here i know i'm coming to maryland in november um, in November, but I don't think okay. It's but it is. Uh, let me look here. Okay, because I know you sold out in Rochester, New York. You just sold out, I think. We did. We're in Hagerstown, Maryland. Okay. And I think the show might be sold out. But Andrea, tell you what, if you email me, it's matt at mattmarmusic dot com. If you're listening right now, still email me. It's in Hagerstown. I'm not sure how far of a drive that is for you, but Maryland's not a huge, the biggest state in the, in the planet. Um, we can, uh, we'll, we'll get you, we'll get you some tickets. That's wow. v- very sweet, very sweet. Well, real quickly, I know Jerry. I've got to announce it because I couldn't sleep all night, so I've just got to announce it. Matt, you know, Jerry was talking about the One Faith Experience and the One Faith Extreme. It is an amazing. Eight thousand uh, attendees will be coming to the Chaffetz Arena at the on the campus of St. Louis University on April twenty third, two thousand sixteen. Next week, we are opening the doors for the tickets, and we know they are going to sell out um, because the One Faith Experience has six of the top, you know, amazing speakers on one stage. And then, like Jerry uh, shared with the Thirsting, being a Catholic, cutting-edge band. And then you, Matt, coming in for the extreme, finishing off the conference. I mean, we just know that for $30 for the entire day, $30— Actually, you can get twenty-four dollar um, whole day event passes, um, but for thirty dollars for premium seats, you can see all of this in one day in St. Louis, and that's going to be next week. We're opening the doors for the tickets. We know it's going to sell out. Um, we already have calls coming in saying buses are getting together to come to see you in St. Louis, Matt. So we're excited you could be with us, and we're sure glad we booked you before you won the Dove Awards. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. I still would have come, Debbie. You know, I think really? it's the. Uh, I always tell people that large scale events are they're not life, but <clears throat> they're a reminder of the afterlife. Mm. Um, and uh, in the sense that you know, when Paul, the the Saint Paul, and uh, you know John, the writer of Revelation, when they when they talk about heaven, they talk about a great cloud of witnesses. They talk about. <clears throat> just a sea of people praising God in eternity. And there's this innate sense in us that, that we, that when we are part of a large event, <clears throat> particularly around our faith, it helps us get oriented in the, in a realization of a couple of things. One, that the church is a lot bigger than our regular experience of it. And I think, you know, especially as Catholics, you know, we, we take part in a, in a universal church that celebrates, the same readings, the same um, prayers, and the same Eucharist every Sunday. And so it's a, Catholicism is a global faith. The Church 
the you know the you know the church is a global reality, but most of our experiences of it, um, especially if you're a parent, you're typically just in a cry room, <laughs> or you're outside holding your kid <laughs> and uh, thinking, when am I ever going to hear a homily? Um, but but so what's good about this is that coming to a full day like this and being around all these other people, it's a real encouragement for you in your own faith to remind you that you're part of something that's so much bigger than just your local expression of it. And um, and yet, even in the midst of being with 8,000 people, that it's just incredible that you know God will still have very intimate, personal moments with, you, with each and every person. And so I encourage everybody listening, like, if you can come to St. Louis for the One Faith Conference, please, it's going to be a great day. We're really excited to be there. Awesome. Well, Matt, you've given us more time than we uh, we had hoped for, and we appreciate that so much. So I want to thank you. I uh, wish you all the best. Uh, I actually uh, I live in Southern California, but I went over to Prescott, if you'll remember, and Debbie and I uh, came and saw you there. And I, yeah. I was, I, I'd heard your music before, but you know, seeing you in person was really uh, an awesome experience for me. So we're excited to have you part of our One Faith event in St. Louis. And Debbie, I don't know if you've got anything else before we let Matt go. Well, I just want to say, Matt, um, I always kid everybody saying that I named my second child after you because my second one is named <laughs> Matthew. Yeah. Um, but, Matt, I just wanted to say on behalf of um, all the years that we were the recipients at our church in Mesa, Arizona, of your music, we, we just I know I can speak for all of us. We were so blessed. Uh, we never realized how precious it was until, you know, it. it we didn't we didn't have the um, it, uh, you know, every week anymore. And I will tell you that. You blessed us so much. You've, t- you've changed our hearts. And um, I'm born on November 9th. I know you're born on November 10th. So I want to wish you um, a very happy early birthday. Oh, you too. Thank you. Thank you. God All bless right, you and your family. God bless you. We'll look forward to seeing you uh, in St. Louis. God bless Matt Marr. And we're going to be joined by Tom Booth in the second half of the program. Uh, we got a couple minutes before the break, so more details. Here you go. You want to write this website down. As Debbie said, we open the doors to ticket sales next week. It's called the One Faith Experience. Okay, We're not calling it a conference. It's going to be an experience. 8,000 people packed into the Chaffetz Arena, campus of St. Louis University. Here are the speakers that are going to speak during the One Faith Experience. Tim Staples from Catholic Answers, Father Larry Richards, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, Hector Molina from right there in St. Louis, Sonia Corbett, Scripture Evangelist, and Adam Bly, a religious demonologist. And we're calling the concert that night the One Faith Extreme. And it'll be uh, the Thirsting out of the Pacific Northwest and then uh, Matt Marr and Debbie unbelievable you know call us crazy but we're pricing this at either 12 or 15 dollars for each of the events so i mean it's just absolutely absurd to think that somebody you know might not consider coming because the price point the speakers the the bands uh what we want to do deb is make the faith accessible to people and and give them an awesome experience exactly to have that massive excuse me i'm I'm getting choked up because i'm so excited that massive you know, just assembly of all of us together, uh, growing in our faith and growing in music, onefaithexperience.com. That's where you can find out the information. Dear listeners, I have to share with you um, when the doors do open for tickets, because Jerry said $12 for the kind of the arena seats, and then the premium seats are $15 for for the conference, $15 for the concert. So think of it this way, $24 for the whole day or $30 for the whole day to experience this massive sense of being Catholic Christians all together, learning and growing and living our faith and experiencing it through uh, music at the end of the conference. How exciting is that? But I will tell you, dear listeners, we are getting inundated with emails, uh, notes, um, all sorts of tabs of people saying, please let us know when the tickets go on sale because people want to form their adult formation groups. They want to send um, all these different uh, ticket places are going to be, uh, Ticketmaster is going to be distributing the tickets, but we want to get the information to you. So that's why we're sharing it today. You can get email updates and all sorts of information on onefaithexperience.com. There's that glorious music, Jerry. I think that's our one immovable break. That's right. (laughs) We're coming back with more Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Tom Booth joins us next. 
What's stopping you from becoming a Catholic? Why can't women become priests? I don't understand why I have to earn salvation. How is it possible that God created everything? Why do I need to confess my sins to why a priest? Why is the Catholic Church so unwilling to wreck the Catholic Church is too rich? Catholics worship Mary and our community. As far as I'm concerned, all religions are equal. You are called to communion with Dr. David Anders. Today, 2 p.m. Eastern, on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. 60 Seconds with Father Mitch Pacwa. Holiness is the infallible measure of the works of the apostolate. When you do something, you want to know, did I do it well or did I do it poorly? To know if you did well or if you did poorly, you have to have a scale to measure it with, right? When you're trying to lose weight, you have a scale to see if you're going up or going down. Here, you have holiness as the measure. Are you becoming more holy as you do the apostolate you live in and work in? And are the people around you becoming more holy? Or at least, if they aren't, are they getting aggravated because you're holy? Not because you're obnoxious, but because you're holy. It's also the measure for the mission that we're on, all the missionary efforts. If we know that we're being successful by our holiness. The people you know and trust are on EWTN. Get an insider's look at the latest information from EWTN. Sign up for WINGS, EWTN's weekly email newsletter. Get the latest information about live events, special features, and guests. Connect with EWTN on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Just go to EWTN.com and click on the WINGS link to sign up. Don't miss a minute of all that's happening at EWTN. Get your WINGS today. Take two with Jerry and Debbie on EWTN Radio. And if you didn't get a chance to jot down the website that we mentioned before the break, it's OneFaithExperience.com, and uh, you will find everything you need. We're going to have uh, the tickets go on sale next week. We have uh, uh, an organization, uh, uh, friends of ours, that we're working with for travel packages, and the first One Faith Experience, again, at the Chaffetz Arena, uh, campus of St. Louis University, next April 23rd. Mark your calendars. It's going to be an awesome event. Uh, so right now, you can get uh, on an email update list for when tickets go on sale. And again, that's OneFaithExperience.com. And Jerry, you I, I don't know if you mentioned that we're going to be hosting the event. We're going to have a very, a very unique set right on the side of the stage where we're going to host the conference in a very conversational way that will engage all of the 8,000 participants It'll be really an exciting time. I think, I think Matt Mar uh, shared it nicely of when we when we all come together. How beautiful that is! It's just uh, you know, just a great foretaste of what we're going to experience. Um, you know, hopefully, God willing, in eternity. And how wonderful is that? So let's do it at Chaffetz Arena, April twenty third, two thousand sixteen. Dear listeners, don't don't hesitate. The, you know, the tickets are so inexpensive. I was telling people just uh, recently from California, I said, you know, go ahead and purchase, you know, a bunch for your adult formation group because it's so inexpensive, you know, it's worth it. And to make it, and you don't want to miss out. You don't want to say I couldn't get in. And that's, you know, we only have room for so many, 8,000 and, and, and a few extra, and that's it. I mean, we are going to, we expect to sell out. This will be exciting. Yeah, and, uh, you know, if you're not in or around uh, St. Louis or that region, I know it's going to pull from several hundred miles, but no matter where you are, will you do us a favor? Please commit today to praying for this event because uh, the expenses you can imagine are through the roof. But Debbie and I and our team, we thought, you know what? We want to make this accessible. We don't, you know, uh, God bless you know, other conferences. They charge $50, $100. Um, again, this is six top speakers in two bands, 12 or $15, folks. Those are the ticket prices. And we're going to have to make this on, uh, you know, just volume, you know, getting people 
people there. So keep it in your prayers if you would, but if you can get there, it's next April 23rd. Again, onefaithexperience.com is where you can get on our email update list, and we'll have uh, the tickets and all information available next week. All right, Debbie, looks like we have your good friend Tom Booth on the line. I, I'm excited, and I hear his 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 time is tight, so we're going to get move right along. I just wanted to share a little bit about Tom Booth. He's an incredibly talented contemporary Christian music artist. He's a, a just a gifted musician and songwriter, and Tom has been composing music for over 40 years, working with all of the leaders in Christian music. You know, you heard Matt Marr say that Tom was is a mentor of his, and I remember when Tom introduced Matt Marr to us at our parish. It was really an exciting time. And Tom has composed and performed for Mother Teresa and John Paul II. And even with all these many accomplishments, I know for a fact that Tom's greatest ministry is his family, his wife Tammy, and his three beautiful children. And uh, I, I can say that we're proud to say Matt, uh, Tom has not moved to Nashville. He lives in Arizona, and we're so glad that he has been continually blessing us with his music. And yes, he is the other CD in my car as well. So welcome to Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Hi, Debbie. Hi, Jerry. Thanks for having me on. Sure, Tom. So what are you up to? Where are you, and what are you producing now? Oh, my goodness. I'm in Chicago, Illinois this morning with uh, evangelist, musician, youth minister Steve Angersano, who's with you know OCP and Spirit and Song, and we're shooting a, a music video uh, on a new song that we composed together called I Am the Bread of Life. It's a, a, you know, we, we, we know the song of the, that same title, but this is a new song really focused on the Eucharist and the hope and the love that Jesus brings us through that sacrament. And we're we're doing a music video, uh, so it's a busy day. <laughs> yeah, and Tom, Debbie mentioned you've been composing music for, uh, for over forty years. So I'm sure you started when you were what two or three years old, right? <laughs> I, now, I think it's close to forty. I, I started in eighth grade um, writing music. I fell in love with the guitar. My grandfather played piano. My dad sang in choirs. My mother sang, and I just started writing music, expressing my thoughts in the eighth grade. And of course my senior year in high school when my whole life and focus shifted to Jesus and the church, and my songs shifted as well. So I don't know if it's 40 years, but it's certainly 30-something. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, did I don't know if you got to hear, Matt, that he was on the first half of the show, and he was sharing that you um, are one of his mentors. And one of the things, you know, I got I actually got tongue-tied, Tom. I mean, it's amazing. If you guys have known me for so long, I, I normally are, am not without words. But I was getting inundated with texts from everybody from Arizona, just everyone saying, you know, how blessed we were to have you and Matt together as our music ministers in Arizona. And we, we you know, you don't realize what you've what you had in your midst until you don't have it any longer. And mm. and we were watching, you know, you continue building the kingdom through song and Matt is growing and winning Dove Awards. And the one thing that all of us have noticed from Arizona, Tom, and is that you and Matt and the others that you have associated with, your hearts are in the right place. Your your mm. spirits are alive and we all gravitate towards that. We we mm. are edified by your your conviction to our faith and how you use song to move us forward. I, I just want to say thank you for being the person that you are inside and out. Thank you, Lord, and you're welcome. Thank you, Debbie. But we all know it is not I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And that comes to mind. And then, of course, the sacrament of reconciliation and the grace of the Eucharist, and then my beautiful wife, Tammy. So those are, those are the three responses to that. You know. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Lord. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, if anyone uh, listening would like to uh, ask a question, make a comment, share your take on uh, music or other ways we can uh, use our talents and gifts to build up the kingdom of God, Tom Booth is on with us. 1-800-585-9396. Uh, Tom, if you're open to calls, we can, uh, we can take a couple here if you'd like. Sure, that'd be no problem. Okay. I'm right. taking a little uh, break from this video shoot, and it's great to spend <laughs> some time with you guys. And thank you for your ministry and the uh, the evangelization that you do on the radio. We appreciate that. Yeah, sure. By the way, how much time thank do we you. have you for? We we don't want to uh, abuse the opportunity. So how long can you stay with us? <laughs> we have a few more minutes. Okay. There is patiently right. waiting, and um, it, it's it's great to spend time right. with you guys. And you know, um, I'm I'm happy. You know, the work I've been doing with OCP and Spirit and Song and 
um, there's so many wonderful artists doing so many wonderful things. So I hope people just continue to support Catholic music and the efforts that we're making to create art and to spread the good news of Jesus. So. Right. All right. Beautiful. Well, let's go to David. David's been waiting so patiently. I think he gets our patience award from Lynn, Massachusetts. <laughs> uh, David, welcome to take two with Jerry and Debbie and our guest, Tom Booth. Well, good morning to all and God bless. Thank good morning. You. God bless you. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's wonderful how, how the Holy Spirit works. Because I just turned on the radio and you guys came on like all the time. Like I remember last time when I came on, it was my birthday. I don't know if you remember. but Yep, sure do. I turned it on and it was the same message. I turned it on today and it was like, you guys talking about music and that's what I do. Like I, I do music. I do on Spanish hip hop and like Catholic music for the youth and stuff like that. And I'm also involved with the, with the movement called AMDG Movement. I'm going to go to glory, I'm going to give all glory to God. And what we do with our music, it's we inspire youth to, you know, to get closer to God, get closer to, you know, to what they need for their salvation and just to be comfortable because all the stuff that's going on now, all the music that doesn't make sense, that's taking them, taking their eyes away from the faith of, from the face of Christ and just getting them lost in the materialism things and living in a fantasy that's not realistic. And hearing you guys, hearing Matt and Tom, and talking about, like, you know, all the music you guys are creating, and, and it's just moving the world and moving everybody closer to Christ. And it, it's just amazing what you guys are doing. I never you know, I ever David, heard... David, I want to I thank you for those words, but I also want to encourage you. You know, we we are the body of Christ, and our Lord needs your yes as well as our yes. And there you are in a Spanish community and in a medium hip-hop you know that some people would say, "Oh, don't, don't do that." But we we need to share the gospel in all forms. So thank you for saying yes and being there for those kids. That's a style of music that speaks to them. And of course, the the Hispanic culture is so beautiful. And so keep going, man. We need what you're doing as well. You guys, music because I want to get more inspired. And right more, I only I only been doing this for two years because I've been doing you know world music, and I just left it because. It wasn't making sense to me anymore, and especially when I have kids myself, and I want them to enjoy life, enjoy it in the right way, and also in, in praising God and everything they do. And, you know, what you guys would inspire that you guys are providing for us, we can move on even further and just be united Thank in you, one David. body of Christ. We appreciate da- that. David, you mentioned uh, calling the, the show before. If my memory is right, and I'm, I'm old enough to where it very well may not be, um, it was the show we did on Do You Long for Heaven. Was that the one you called in on? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, when, and you, when you were out. We were not yeah, you were out yeah. with. I think your daughter was it her birthday or something. Yeah, it was my birthday, and I was. Just, we oh, were your just birthday. Having fun. Yeah. Yeah. How'd the day go that day? It was awesome. You know, we had fun. You know, we had a little lunch day, and then you know, just something we do every something we do every Friday. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, David, thank you so much for calling in and, and sharing again and, and checking in with us and, and constantly, um, you know, we want to hear from you. So keep us updated and keep your music going, you know, like, like Tom said, building up the body of Christ. And thanks and have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day. Tom, I, I want to ask you real quickly. Um, so you're, you're producing right now. You're working on, on different products, different uh, projects. And where, I mean, are you touring? Are you, where are you, you know, mainly giving us your gift? of music yeah well um i work part-time for spirit and song ocp and helping mentor younger artists so that takes a lot of my time i have a studio i produce um recordings for other catholic artists and i'll be at ncyc here in a couple weeks uh in indianapolis with twenty-three thousand teenagers mm. um i'm doing parish missions that's really probably the joy of my heart in terms of ministry is spending three or four days in a parish and singing and praying with the good people and sharing faith um yeah so all of that kind of keeps me busy Uh, i did release a a, an album this year called time stand still and debbie forgive me for uh, a lack of humility it's actually in the the pre-screening for the grammys this year so it's called time stand still and all of us that work on it are, are happy and proud of that effort. Very cool. Very cool. So can we learn all about that on Tom Bo- TomBoothMusic.com? Yeah, you could go to TomBoothMusic.com or um, okay. OCP.org. Um, okay. Or just put my name in Google and you never know what comes up. 
<laughs> iTunes, <laughs> iTunes has the music I'm doing, but still trying to serve and listen to the Lord um, and, and, you know, be obedient to his call in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I have to say it again, Tom, because I'm still getting text messages like crazy from everybody. The reason why I think we're so happy for you and Matt and all the others who are, who are similar like you is the, is the fact that because your, your hearts are such in the right place with ministry that it's fun to watch what's happening in your lives. And it's fun to watch what's happening in your families and how they're growing and they're, and they're growing up. I mean, your kids are grown now. I mean, I remember Anthony when he was barely walking and now he's all grown up. I saw a latest picture of him, handsome as can be. Yeah. Six feet four and 18 years old. So proud of that young man and my daughters and my beautiful wife. And I'm so proud of Matt. You know, Matt is just doing wonderful things, saying yes and being faithful to the call of God in his life and pointing to Jesus. And it's wonderful to see. So I'm with you uh, watching people become who they are. There's a beautiful book, you know, Become Who You Are. And uh, it's, mm-hmm. it's exciting. And it's, we carry our cross, of course. Life isn't easy but life is beautiful. Right. Amen to that. And I think you could agree with me, right, Tom, that even though he moved to Nashville, we're still going to consider him an Arizonan. Oh, absolutely. Well, he's a Canadian. (laughs) I know he is a Canadian. I know. We forget about that. He was born in Canada. Yeah. (laughs) He's a Catholic and he's, he's a good guy. He is. He is. Amen to that. Wow. Well, we're so glad you blessed us today. Jerry, I know you wanted to jump in and Share. Well, I just we want we're going to let you go, Tom. It sounds like uh, your 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 project is 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 beckoning you. So, uh, thanks for making a few minutes to be here with us, and we, we'd love to have you on maybe at greater length sometime, and and certainly collaborate on whatever we can in the future down the road. Uh, please please invite me. I'd I'd love to spend more time with you all and the good people here at Spirit Juice uh, Productions. They just a great Catholic production company and. They do wonderful work, and they've been very patient. You're right. I probably should get back to work. (laughs) All right. God bless you, Tom. God bless you both. Keep up the great work. You too. All for God. Amen. 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 All right. We are going to go to a a short break here. Uh, We've got time still to get your uh, phone calls. Uh, Have you found uh, a way to utilize your gifts for the Lord, for the building up of the kingdom? Uh, Maybe not on the same size of stage as Matt Maher or Tom uh, Tom Booth, but let us know how you put your gifts and talents to work for the Lord. 1-800-585-9396. This is Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Sixty seconds with Mother Angelica. The Eucharist is the one presence of Jesus that's real. It is the presence of God. He promised to leave. I will not leave you orphans. There is no comparison between the other presences of God. The presence of God is in His Word. The presence of God is in me and you, or you would dissolve into nothingness. The presence of God is in creation, in the air we breathe. But when that priest says, this is my body, and this is my blood, that is the real presence of God. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. It is Jesus himself, alive. The people you know and trust are on EWTN. Hi, this is Al Cresta. Thanks for listening to the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. show today on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. We're so glad you stayed with us today. We had Matt Marr on for the first part of the show and then Tom Booth that continued on the show talking about building up God's kingdom and we're talking about song and using God's gifts to build up the kingdom. We all have the opportunity. We all have the the chance if we're open to God and let, letting God use us to build the kingdom. That's what we wanted to talk about today. Monday's show is very, very interesting. I just wanted to highlight that because um, it's actually, I have quite a lot of experience in it actually. It's talking about caregiving, caregiving um, to those in your family or to others and 
it's a forgotten ministry, and we're going to be talking about that on Monday. And then also, Jerry, if I may say, just because I'm just cracking up about this. I think it's hilarious. I didn't even realize that this is how they booked it. But I'm on Catholic Answers Live on Monday for the second um, hour of Catholic Answers Live talking about life after Awesome. Thank you. Life after annulment and remarriage. But then I just looked at their schedule and I'm following the first hour, which is Bishop Olmsted. I mean, I don't know if I can do that, Jerry. I mean, he is just, <laughs> that's very tough to follow Bishop Olmsted. But I, I'll get, I guess <laughs> he, I'll uh, give it my best shot. huh? Well, he's like we were talking about earlier, you know, the thirsting opening up for Matt Marr. The bishop is your warm up act on yeah. Monday <laughs> on Catholic Answers Live. No, I'll look at it. Here's, here, put a yeah, positive spin on it, it Debbie. Go ahead. You'll, you'll have, he'll, he'll have, tons of listeners and they'll just stay and listen to your hour too so really it's it's probably better that you follow him uh, okay I, that's a great way of looking at it it still makes my knees just buckle speaking about that i have to tell you we posted on take two show.com we posted the youtube which we didn't get to talk about with matt marr the youtube video of matt singing at eucharistic adoration at world youth day in rio um, with Pope Francis and all the other clergy um, at Eucharistic Adoration, Matt Marr was singing, Lord, I Need You, on his knees. And um, I wanted to talk to Matt about that, about just when I watched that YouTube video, and we posted it on Take2Show.com, and you can watch it um, yourselves. I just, I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he sung that so beautifully on his knees. I mean, I, literally, Jerry, I would have fallen over. I mean, it just, it's amazing how God has blessed him and gifted him to be able to use song to really move people. And there was uh, tears flowing on in the, in the whole entire, you know, the youth. There was 3 million youth, I believe, and they were just tears flowing. And you could see that all the clergy were very touched by his song and, and, and it, it, it just helping with the whole feeling of Eucharistic adoration. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, Debbie. We like to check our social media and our email for the program. Email is take2 at EWTN.com. And I wanted to read an email that we got from uh, a lady named Jill. Jill, I hope you're listening right now. Uh, the subject line says, thank you, Matt. I have hope, exclamation mark. And uh, Jill says, thank you, Matt. I pray and wait and shed tears for my 14-year-old daughter hoping that one day she'll have a true encounter with Jesus. Last night, instead of listening to her usual music while getting ready for bed, I heard her playing Burning in My Soul over and over again. She heard that at a Life Teen Mass that she started attending a few weeks ago. And Jill says, Our Lord has brought much hope to me through your, Matt, your music. Praise God for your talent, Jill. And Debbie, that fits perfectly into our topic today, using our gifts as we heard both Matt and Tom Booth say, you know what, it's it's not me, it's God, but we, well, Debbie, we have to acknowledge the gifts that we have. And I think it, it's so really unfortunate that a lot of people, they, they want to downplay their gifts so much out of humility. It's understandable. But humility is what? It's simply acknowledging reality as it is. Every person listening, Debbie, has been given gifts, and we want to encourage them to find out what those are and use them. That's exactly right, and that's why I think we handpicked Matt and Tom to be with us today, because they are they're two models of how to really be open to God, to still maintain a, a humble spirit, but using God's gift to the greatest. And that's what God wants for all of us, just to be open. I mean, it, and I believe in my heart of hearts that when we see um, witnesses like Matt and Tom, it allows us to have hope and, and have encouragement, like Jill was saying, and to, to look towards the future and say, wow, you know, God is good. God is great. We can keep moving forward. We can keep growing in our faith. We can keep using God's gifts. And, you know, if we do that, the more we do that, we will transform this world, this crazy thing called life. We'll transform it because God's gifts are greater than anything else we have to deal with on this earth. So, dear listeners, take you know, comfort in knowing that that God in his ability, he knows he's the umbrella watching over the whole entire universe. And guess what? If we're open to it, we can transform this world through, through God's gifts and, and him using us. Well, amen to all of that. And as we get set to wrap up, not only a show, but a week, 
Webby. We'll uh, wow. we'll promo next week's uh, topics in just a few minutes. But I want to get back to uh, just again reminding our listeners uh, that Debbie and I, well, it's my company, Third Millennium Media. We have uh, we have developed uh, a movement really that we're calling One Faith. I mean, Saint Paul says there is one faith, one Lord, one hope, one baptism, and we are uh, developing a number of resources uh, pertaining to this. But again, one of them is going to be a large venue faith conferences and concerts, but we're calling them experiences and extremes. So the one faith, the very first one faith experience and one faith extreme is going to take place on the campus of St. Louis University, the Chaffetz Arena. It holds 10,000, but for our configuration, we should be able to get in a little more than 8,000 and tickets and information go on sale next week. So get on our email update list. It's onefaithexperience.com because Debbie, why don't you remind people again uh, who the speakers and bands are that they're going to enjoy. Oh, it's just amazing. I mean, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, Father Larry Richards, Tim Staples, Hector Molina, he's right there in St. Louis, Adam Bly, amazing speaker on, uh, uh, he's a, a demonologist, amazing. I mean, you can learn so much from what he has to impart to us. Scripture evangelist, Sonia Corbett, we have The Thirsting, which is a cutting edge Catholic rock band, and Matt Marr is going to finish off the, the day. I mean, it, it couldn't get any better than that, and I just want to just share, dear listeners, if you are passionate about elevating your faith, if you're passionate about taking it to that next level, making it an experience, taking it to the extreme in such a beautiful way where you just kind of feel like you're floating when you leave that arena, then I would suggest being the first ones in to buy as many tickets as you can because they're inexpensive at onefaithexperience.com when those doors open. I, I Jerry, I'm going to predict that we're definitely going to sell out before the end of the year because we just know by all the uh, all the traffic that we're getting of people wanting to know when the tickets are going on sale. So don't hesitate. Don't wait. Um, and make sure you keep updated with us at onefaithexperience.com. Yeah, the tickets are not yet on sale, just to remind you of that. But we do have an email update list you can get on at that website. And uh, it's, this isn't just for people in St. Louis. If you're in Kansas City, we've been talking with people in Omaha and Des Moines who are, are going to bring buses. And, of course, Nashville and Memphis, Oklahoma City, uh, not too far away, Louisville, Indianapolis, Chicago. So we just look forward to a, a packed house. And our goal, our number one goal, is to make the faith accessible. A powerful experience at a, at, a, at a price that you can bring the whole family. It's going to be a family event. Debbie and I are going to be there. We're not really going to be MCs. We're going to have a kind of a broadcast set set up alongside the stage, and you'll get to know the speakers and the bands intimately. So I'm excited about that. And Debbie, my takeaway today is I'm so glad there are people like our speakers and Matt Marr and Tom Booth and our listeners who know and use their gifts for God. Yes, and be open. My takeaway is be open to God's gifts. He wants to work through you. So join us Monday when we're talking about caregiving and how it's a forgotten ministry. If you're a caregiver in your home or your community, you may want to tune in for this. But until then, Jerry and I want to wish you a beautiful and blessed weekend. See you Monday.